Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now just before we get into the next video I have a tip for you guys and I've just found out I was stand, stood here waiting to start filming and there were flies all over the place for some reason and this is excellent fly killing stuff. Yeah, well, I'll give it a try, spray a few flies with it. Well they drop dead like a dead fly. Bloody good. There is still one more up there somewhere, but I'll get him, don't worry. Oh, there he is. Okay, I'll find him when I'm off camera. I'm not going to bother you watching me trying to kill a fly. That would be terrible. Um, so, this video, we've now removed both cylinder heads off the Honda Magna V-Twin 250cc Tenacious Motorcycle. And I want to basically do a hone and new rings on the pistons. But unfortunately, it's not a traditional style engine. It hasn't got the barrels as separate components. The cylinders are cast into the, the crankcases. What well, the crankcase. The, the crankcase itself is split horizontally, not vertically like most motorcycles. Uh, and that's inherent to you know, V-twin, I suppose. And um, so what we need to do is remove that entire uh, top half of the crankcase, get it away from the rest of the engine so that I can do the work on it, then I can reassemble it. Having a quick look at the, at the engine itself, we're going to have to remove um, the, uh, the, the flywheel cover and the clutch cover because they bolt to both halves of the crankcase and obviously they're not going to allow it to separate. So we'll get those off first. I'll keep delving into the manual trying to get some kind of direction because I haven't done one of these before but it's really cool to bring you along on the journey. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to go and kill some more flies and I'll see you in a second. Okay. Right, so we'll whip this clutch cover off first. Some of the bolts are already missing. Don't know why, it must even be a bracket. I had to come off when he was taking it off the bike. He's also uh, disconnected this cable here, which might be a neutral light or something, I suppose, on there. So we've got a ring of bolts, what's left, and they're all eight millimeter. So we need an eight mil socket. Now, normally I would use my electric drill for this, my Makita, but uh, like I said in one of the last videos, the um, I have four batteries for it, and the last battery died this morning, so that's the end of that. And yeah, I could use windy. I could use a windy gun. I could use air tools, but it's bloody noisy. It doesn't really lend itself too well to. Geez, that was close. I always have to do a quarter inch drive to get in there. I think we will do. Yeah, yeah. Do that one. Okay, there we go, right, we get in now, that's that one, that one, like I said before, I haven't pulled one of these apart, not this particular engine, so it's pretty cool to get the chance to do one to be honest. Pull these out now. You should really make note of which bolts go where. If you've got a, if you're really picky, you can make yourself a cardboard template and then pop the bolts through the through the cardboard. But at the moment, they all look the same length, so fingers crossed. Dodge that bullet. Yeah. So again, we'll just unclip that. I've even opened the garage door so that's why you can hear all the birds because it's actually a very muggy day today. And this garage gets, well you've seen, it gets incredibly hot. That's why some of the tool girls obviously decide to wear less rather than more clothing I'm sure. Just to keep cool, it's not for you guys. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Now the parts for this have all just been ordered. Now that I finally made a decision to put new rings in it, just while we're on with it really. Uh, and they're gonna come from Japan. So they're gonna take about two weeks. So uh, the rebuild videos aren't gonna happen for probably three weeks, because I'm gonna be really busy with work. 
Okay, so that's all those bolts out. We should be able to give it a bit of a magic tap and Honda give us some little locations to do that. Put one there, one here, and one down here. We can give it a little gentle tap with a magic hammer and that whole casing should come off, he says. And of course, there's gonna be earthquakes on the camera. Now you hear that the change in noise, that tells you the casing's coming off, which is a good sound. There we go. Super. Right, just be careful of dowels, because sometimes they get a bit stuck on the dowels. I'm not bothered about the gasket. You get new gaskets. Too bad. Yes, the gasket is junk, so we'll have to come up with a plan for that. I'll get Jeremy to order a new gasket tomorrow. Right, fantastic. That looks like a rev counter pickup, maybe. It's pretty cool. Don't know if it has a rev counter or not. I never even saw the bike, so probably it probably is that. That's that one. There we go. Look, so there's your rev counter pickup. Okay. Well, we'll get rid of that casing. We'll flip the engine around and we've got the flywheel casing to take off next. Cooking on gas. In fact, before we go any further, I think I'm going to be prudent just to remove all this wiring. I'm just going to remove that sensor, which is also an 8mm bolt. It's probably going to come off anyway. If I take it off, then it shouldn't get damaged. That's the plan. There we go. And I'll put that bolt back in there because it's a specific bolt. Oh, newbie mechanic will uh, be very happy to see me do that. Okay, gasket scrap. So we'll get just pull that through the gasket. Get rid of that. That's double double grommet. Wonderful, full of corrosion, great stuff. Right, we'll pop that in the box. Okay, what else have we got? We've got an earth, an earth wire here, so we'll pull that up as well. That's a 10 mil. This makes it a lot easier to work on. We ain't got wires flapping around everywhere, and it's a casing bolt anyway, so that will have to come undone. Right, we'll stick that back in there for now. And that can go in with all the other casing bolts later on. Now, the looks of it, there's a lot of them. Okay. Right. You can get rid of that now. Doesn't matter if the uh, cam chain drops down. Can you hear all the dying flies? It's great. Okay. Spin that round. What have we got there? Oh, starting motor wire. Let's get that off. Well, we're on. Okay, big flat screwdriver. That should do the trick. Get that grommet out. Everything sort of corrodes on, doesn't it? Die, flies. But I hate them. This, this time of year, they all seem to be coming in, you know, and trying to find somewhere warm to annoy you. There we go, right, it's 10 mil again. Just be careful you undo these, not to allow the stud to turn if you can help it. That's all right. There we go. Super. Another wire out of the way. There you go, I reckon that'll work. Okay, where's my little eight mil one? Because these are all eight mil head bolts again. Right. One, two, and of course we're going to need another gasket for this. It goes without saying, doesn't it? 
three. Four. Five. Is it all of them? It is all of them. One, two, three, four. Oh, hang on. What's that one down there? Six. That counts. Right. I use that box. Okay. Again, these all look the same size. That's good. I used to do a little Suzuki SJ410 and 413 transfer boxes a lot. And um, from memory, I think every single bloody bolt on the casings of those was a different length. I think it was that. There was something I did. Man, it was such a pain. Because, of course, you never made note of which bolt went where. You just chucked them all in the box and spent the rest of your life trying to work out which one, trying to decode the combination of which one went where. Real pain. Right, is that all of them? It is. Okay. Right, magic hammer. Now, the, obviously, there's nothing to tap against this time, so we'll have to just see if we can free it off this way. There we go. Okay. Just a cover. No wires. Perfect. Right, let's stick that in there. Okay, now I'm hoping I don't have to undo and remove the flywheel. But I could be wrong. I'm going to have to have a look in the manual for that before we go any further, I think. Well, before we go too far. Now, we're going to need to remove this pipe. Uh, because obviously, you know, it connects to something that's on the lower half of the crankcase. And the join, just so you can see it, maybe you can't make it out. But the join is here. And just on this side... I think it's there, looks. it goes right through the middle of that um, output seal for the uh, for the gearbox. So that's going to have to come off, so we'll unscrew that. That one. And that should just come off there once I've undone this end. Okay, so we're going to need two more bolts. 8mm, come back. And probably another gasket. Now, maybe the thermostat's in there, but I don't think so. Who knows? Everything's a surprise for me doing things the first time around, isn't it? Okay, put that in there. Right, that screwdriver. You've been, oh, <laughs> wanted to fall off. Okay. See if we can ease it off at the other end. Okay, water pump. So, obviously a steel pipe coming out. Doesn't look too badly corroded. Side there, and now we can twist that. Oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Okay, we'll do that. So now we need some more o rings. Oh, bloody hell, there's some crap in there. Hmm, might have that to clean out as well. Jeez, okay, so that was that end. So we'll stick that on there, stick that on there, try and keep it all together. And that looks pretty shafted too, so probably an O-ring to go in there. Probably, so it's not like an O-ring, but it's an o, an o rubber type seal, isn't it? Okay, we can go in there. Right, where are we? What are we doing next? Well, it's all going sort of to plan, isn't it? Sort of just winging it my way through at the moment. So we've taken the clutch cover off, we've taken the flywheel cover off, we've removed a water pipe, moved some wires. And now we've sort of got to a crunch point where we need to know what's the next proper step before we try to separate those two crankcase casings. Obviously, 
there's a ton of bolts to undo that, that hold those two casings together. But there might be some other bits and pieces we need to do first, so I'm going to head off. I was going to have a coffee, but I think I'll have a cider. It's a cider day today. So I'm going to have a cider, and it is, you know, it is already beer o'clock, so I'm all good. So I'll go have a cider, and I'll have a quick read through the, the service manual. I think there's a few more pages that I need to have a look at uh, on the computer uh, and get those printed out. And I'll come back, and I'll be a wealth of knowledge, and we'll carry on. See you shortly, crew. Ta-da! I'm back! Easy as that. One cider, only one, and, ah, uh, oh, Chinese noodles. Cheap, like $2. That's all I could find in the pantry. Okay, but the good news is, I have a plan. I've been reading through the workshop manual, and um, there's nothing in there to say, hey, if you're just going to replace the rings and give it a home, this is what you need to do. It just basically says, this is how you strip the engine down. Now, um, there is a cover, basically like a sump, on the engine, and it is... If you look on there, look, it's been removed. This is the engine upside down, and there's a big sump there, look. Now, remember, the plan is just to get those pistons and conrods out of the way so we can hone the cylinders. Now, even if we've got to hone them up with the engine upside down to prevent any kind of, you know, gritty material from the, from the hone getting into the crankcase, which would be terrible, then I can do it upside down. It's not, it's not the end of the world. I just need to cut down on the labour content and the time and the cost in doing this job. So, before we take any more bits and pieces off to split the casings, uh, and to do that I've got to remo remove all the clutch and the primary drive and all that kind of stuff, basically it's a full engine rebuild going by the workshop manual. Let's remove that sump first <clears throat> and see if you can get to the, uh, the big end caps. If we can, we can undo those and then draw the piston and the conrod out through the top of the cylinders. And then, we'll have done it. Obviously reassembly might be a little bit tricky, but hey, I can do tricky. I just don't like to do stuff that I don't need to do. Okay, well, let's take a look. Let's get that sump taken off. So if this works, then I wouldn't have actually needed to take off the flywheel cover or the clutch cover. But hey, it's a learning process, isn't it, for all of us. And once you've stripped one engine down of this style or this type, this brand, this model, then you know for next time. Although saying that, probably keep well away from Honda Magna 250s and all of a The big old engine for a little 250cc. It's had a hard life. There's lots of bits of casing missing from the bottom of this, uh, this sump too. Ooh, that was tight. Sump bolts. Pretty clean inside though. It's not all gummed up like some car engines. Obviously have plenty of oil changes. Been looked after, but it does burn a bit of oil, I must admit. And the problem was it was fouling spark plugs, it was burning that much oil. It would only run on one cylinder after a while. Sometimes it would only start on one cylinder. Wasn't good. Now all these bolts seem to be about the same length, so that's good. Almost there. <clears throat> I have no idea whether we're going to be able to get to where we need to be or not. It'll be a bit of a lucky strike if we can, but hey, if we can't, at least we tried. And the sun's got to come off anyway, I suppose. So. Not the end of the world, but definitely worth a punt. 
And it's all about these tricks, isn't it? Being able to save a bit of time and not have to do the whole job if you don't need to. In this case, a full engine strip. Because it's pretty damned involved and I'm rather busy at the moment. Okay, is that all of them? I think it is. <clears throat> right, magic hammer time. Let's see if we can give it a little tap off. stuck on pretty well maybe maybe I have to undo that too that could be a bolt that goes all the way through so we'll just flip that out that's 12 I think yes it does seem to be on there pretty tight filter in there you watch <laughs> there we go okay yeah pretty sure that that's what was holding it on <clears throat> okay let's pop that in there too I'll give it another go oh, oh, oh. you see it's always worthwhile just double checking okay right o-ring that'll need to be replaced and Man, you know I was saying it was clean. That's not particularly clean, is it? Look at that. That's the colour. Oh, that's the colour it should be. And it's full of grime. Pretty dirty, actually. Wow. Okay. <coughs> Stick that over there. That'll need to go clean out. Now, some other bits that were falling around. We've got this little spacer here and another O-ring. So we'll just pull those out and we'll stick those over there with that. I don't want those falling into the casing. Oh, there's another one. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Right, we need a torch, we can have a good look inside. Look at that. I think we might be in luck. If you look right down there, those are the two end caps for the con rods. Just got to turn the crank and you'll see them come up. So I reckon we can get those undone, one at a time obviously, and um, get the shells out and keep them all the right way around, bring the pistons out, and then I can hone this with the block upside down and maybe some, some rags right down the bottom of the cylinder to stop any kind of ingress of dirt and abrasive material getting into the crankcase. And then once that's done, pop the new rings on the pistons, pop them in, tilt up the end caps to torque, and hey presto, we've got away with it. Awesome. Okay, so now, next job is to undo those bolts. They're not the easiest things to get to by the looks of it. Right, well, here we go. Right, so I'm going in. It turned, it bloody turned. Don't make a liar out of me. Yes. Okay, that's one cracked off. Where's the other one? Down there. Oh, that's easy. I can get straight to that one. We can switch to a uh, quarter inch drive now and you can maybe see what's better what's going on right I've got sort of a bendable shaft on my quarter inch so we'll use that 
definitely not strong enough for taking them out, but... Where's he gone? I can see it. Don't panic. Hopefully it'll stay put. There we go. That's one out. You can still see what's going on, can't you? Okay. It's like brain surgery. But I could never do brain surgery. Just not good enough. Oh, come on. Still too tight, really? Man, that was so loose. Well, it's loose now. Okay, going in. Got it. Excellent. Right, so now we should be able to just tap very gently on those two pins, they're the bolts that are on the big end, and that should then tap the piston down the cylinder and back out. We're going to need to rejig our little wooden blocks because of course the piston is going to come out, hopefully. But if we move that round, there we go, that should work. And then give it a tap. Right, so I can get to that one pretty easy. Sorry, your angles are all over the place today, but it's not the only way I can film it, to be honest. Feel some editing coming on shortly. Oh, we're about through on the other side. There's my torch. Maybe we just give it a little bit of a rotate. Oh, cam chains are getting pretty bound up, unfortunately. There we go. Let's give that another go. Oof. Ah, come back. punch is not long enough. <clears throat> Here's an alternative punch. Let's use this. This is plenty long enough. There we go. Cool. Right, I reckon we're about ready for pulling that piston out. And that end cap should now come off, I reckon. So we'll get that get out of the way first. If she will. Come on, you can do it. There we are. Is it gonna fit? <laughs> There's another problem. There we go. So that's the end cap, and that's off the rear cylinder, I think. That looks a bit right. Got that. How's the shell looking? Let's have a little look. Oh, it's not too bad. Considering how many millions of years old it is, it's done right, isn't it? It's pretty good. Right, let's flick the engine over and withdraw that piston.
<clears throat> okay, so we can give it a little push from behind without catching the journal, of course. Right, journal's out of the way. I'll push that corner out a bit now. Oh, a bit more. Man, that was enough clearance. It's not going to come any further out at the moment because it's caught on the bottom of the cylinder. So I need to rotate the crank a bit more if I can. That might just give us enough. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> oh yeah. Right, that is, that's the rear one I think, yes, rear conrod, piston, rings, that's what we needed out, and that shell's pretty good too. Yeah, bit of wear on there, we'll measure it up. Okay, well we're halfway there and we're sort of committed now, aren't we? So now... We've got another one to get out. This side, this is the uh, the front cylinder, is uh, the nuts are at much more of an acute angle. There's one right down there and one here. And of course, you know, turning the crank helps a little bit, but it doesn't really improve the situation too much. So this is gonna require even more swearing. I might have to go for the quarter inch drive and hope for the best. I reckon I can get that top bolt. Let's give that a go. God, it's going to be so hard putting this back together again. That's the plan. Right, so we're on. It's a fair angle. Oh, and he's got to hold the engine. Oh, man. Now, that slipped, and that's never good. I wonder if... I mean, there will be a way. Obviously, there's a way. But... Not that way. Man, I don't have to take the, uh, take the oil pump out, but... And to take that out, I've got to take the clutch off. It's never good, is it? Nothing is ever easy. But if it was easy, we'd all do it, wouldn't we? Okay. Maybe, maybe I can get an extension on there. You're not gonna see shit, sorry guys. Well that fits on really well, but there's no way I can move that ratchet. Let's have another go. God, talking this up would be fun, wouldn't it? Now, that's a slightly better angle. So hopefully we can maintain a socket in the right position. God, if only I had a tool girl here now, she could hold the engine for me. I think there's half a chance of getting this, getting this bolt undone. <clears throat> oh yeah! Sorry camera. Okay, that's one. Jeez, 
Well done, quarter inch drive ratchet. Ah, getting carried away now. Where's the nut gone? One half turn too many. Oh, it's alright, it's dropped out, it's gone down the other cylinder. Don't panic, people. I reckon we can get it. Let's go fishing. Going down. We got it. Get off. There we are, look. Right, one more to go. That one. Can you see it? It's right down there. Alright, I'll move the camera a bit for you. How's that? Now you can see it. There you are, look. It's right down there. And you're looking sort of side on, aren't you? So it's a bit weird. Alright, so we'll just get that right down there out of the way to give us as much approach as possible and the minimum acuteness of angle. I use my screwdriver to line it up. My apologies if you can't see a lot, but there, you know, there's a limit to my camera work. All right, so we're on. Oh man, got it! You bloody got it! Right, let me just get my. Okay, I've got the magnet ready. Not that it really matters because we can always fish it out, but see if that's gonna bring it off. Nope, still too tight. Okay. Man, I really wasn't too sure if we'd get this one undone or not. Oh yeah, got it. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Fantastic. Now, remember it's not over until it's over. The problem we've got now is getting that con rod extracted and there'd be enough clearance on the cylinder and it was bloody tight on the last one. Okay. Well, we need to tap the con rod away from the journal again now, don't we? So we'll use our super special screwdriver because it's a lot better than the punch. Let's see if we can get down there and give it a bit of a tap. Cool. Now we're going to bring that journal as far away from the cylinder as we can. There we go, that should work. Let's give it a bit more of a tap. Right, I reckon she's ready for extraction. Okay, let's see if we can get that cap out of the way. It might come off now. It might. It just might. Sorry, camera. Very gently kiss the journal, but I think we're going to let ourselves off that. Somebody will tell me off for that, won't they? Should have put bits of rubber on those tubes, Mr. Young. But how can you? When there's a bloody cap in the way. And you're doing keyhole surgery on a Magna 250. Right. Okay. Second cap is off. One thing left to do. Let's do it. Man, I hope it comes out. Now, let's just push that piston a bit further down for now. Right. 
time to move the camera for you. Okay, well, here goes nothing. I think we might be all right. Mister, you can do it. Maybe. Oop. Very delicate procedure. The shell's about to fall out. Stay away from that uh, big end journal. Alright, so maybe a little bit of a tap will work. There we go. Okay. Ta da! We nearly lost the shell, look. Nearly. Nearly, nearly. I'll do for now, it's not going to fall out, is it? Where's any rag? Everything's so small, isn't it? Basically, each cylinder's 125cc, so. Hey, that's not too bad. That's probably me catching with the screwdriver, so. Probably going to get a new set of shells put in it while we're in there. Because they are looking. It's done a few Ks. Don't know how many Ks it's done, but it's done a few. And the rings. Well, they're not seized in the, in the piston. That's good. But hey, it's going to get new ones, but you can see all the all the burning of the oil here, look, down the side of the piston, and on the top, on the crown of the piston, we call that. Hmm, okay, well, there you go. Okay, well, just a quick sneaky peek down the bore, and I use a separate torch for this, because the, the camera light's not particularly good, but we've got some markings here, look, you see that? So this bike, I do know, has been stood for a very long time and used quite infrequently. The board does look very shiny. It's got a good sheen to it, so it's what we call glazed as well, which isn't going to be helping with our oil burning problem. Um, the other good thing is, a bit further down, you can see a distinct line here. There's quite a lot of this board down the bottom that isn't used, uh, which means that making honing it will be really easy. I can just put a rag right down the bottom and stop all the crap going into the crankcase and there are the journals down there look stop all the crap going into the crankcase and get it honed ready for those new rings and then we can get it put back together again bloody awesome okay well there you go a bit of patience and it paid off didn't it plus a little bit of research looking in the manual but even then I had to make a bit of a punt but I had nothing to lose I'll probably be cursing myself when I'm putting this thing back together again trying to get everything lined up and talked up and get those end caps put on properly and then get the bolts or get the nuts back on the threads right down you know it's gonna be it's not gonna be easy but a bit of a challenge and then I can say at the end of it hey I did that without stripping the engine down hmm pretty good <laughs> okay well there's gonna be more in this series no doubt the next one is gonna be me honing those bores don't think it's gonna to happen today we'll wait and see I can, I can just do another cider one's never enough is it Oh well, we'll find out. Okay crew, well if you enjoyed the video, why not click on the subscribe button. Uh, you can then uh, click on the gear icon and tick the box and turn on notifications. Same way as ringing the bell if you're on a smart device and then our friends down at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. Uh, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those uh, portals. However, I would prefer first point of contact through the comments on YouTube because I'm on there all the time when I'm not filming and it's much easier to answer your questions. Plus you might, if you ever scroll down, you might find that the, somebody else has posed the same question and either I've answered it or one of you guys has answered it because it's a bit of a bit of a forum is the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel now. There's lots of people pitching in and helping others out which is great because I don't have time unfortunately to answer every, every query or every comment. It just I spend my life just doing that and I need to keep making videos for you guys. And I have a full-time job, don't forget. 
there is also a Patreon page now, so you can drop onto there and read all about some of the history of the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Uh, I think there'll be a bit more history going on about my uh, history, the good bits, um, <laughs> and of course the up and coming stuff that's planned for the channel because, you know, this is a long term project for me. We're only, what are we now, two and a half years in, I think? Yeah, about two and a half years in, and um, this is, well, I'll keep doing it when I'm retired. So, for as long as YouTube exists, I'll keep churning out the videos for you guys. That's a promise. Okay, crew, well, until next time, I'll see you around. Cheers, over and out. Hey, little girl, Sam. How are I'm you? Back. You're back? It's Fantastic. So I know, and I've got a new shirt, so I thought it's only right. I'll give you a new shirt too, so there you go. So excited for my new shirt, and I don't have to wear different shirts every day. And as a classic Tall Girl Sam move, I am going to wear it like this. Wow, would you look at that? I'd say that is a great present for your girlfriend if she's into tools. If she's not, she's probably into tools because you're a tool. See what I did there? Tool girl shirt, perfect.